Tokoa Falls. Early in the days of the white occupation of Georgia, a cabin stood not far from the falls of Tokoa, the beautiful. Its only occupant was a feeble woman, who found it ill work to get food enough from the wild fruits and scanty clearing near the house, and she had nigh forgotten the taste of meat, for her two sons, who were her pride, no less than her support, had been killed by savages. She often said that she would gladly die if she could harm the red men back in return for her suffering, which was not Christian doctrine, but was natural. She was brooding at her fire one winter evening, in wonder as to how one so weak and old as she could be revenged, when her door was flung open and a number of red men filled her cabin. She hardly changed countenance. She did not rise. You may take my life, she said, for it is useless now that you have robbed it of all that made it worth living. Hush, said the chief. What does the warrior want with the scalps of women? We war on your men because they kill our game and steal our land. Is it possible that you come to our homes except to kill? We are strangers and have lost our way. You must guide us to the foot of Tokoa and lead us to our friends. I lead you? Never. The chief raised his axe, but the woman did not flinch. There was a pause, in which the iron still hung menacing. Suddenly, the dame looked up and said, If you promise to protect me, I will lead you. The promise was given, and the band set forth, the aged guide in advance, bending against the storm and clasping her poor rags about her. In the darkest part of the wood, where the roaring of wind and groaning of branches seemed the louder for the booming of waters, she cautioned the band to keep in single file, but to make haste, for the way was far and the gloom was thickening. Bending their heads against the wind, they pressed forward, she in advance. Suddenly, yet stealthily, she sprang aside and crouched beneath a tree that grew at the very brink of the fall. The Indians came on, following blindly, and in an instant she decried the leader as he went whirling over the edge, and one after another the party followed. When the last one had gone to his death, She arose to her feet with a laugh of triumph. Now I too can die, she cried. So saying, she fell forward into the grayness of space.